Hey guys, welcome back for part two. Um, so I'm putting the engine together. I finally got somewhat done with the cylinder head. Um, it's a little rough. The guy who did the welding work was kind of iffy, so there's a little porosity and stuff here and there. But we're gonna go ahead and run with it. I cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, like I said, it's a little rough. I polished it up. These are stainless steel valves. Um, I just wanted to share a couple more things than I did in the last video, but I kind of rounded the edges on the valves, all right, to help out with flow past those valves, and then I lapped them in. Um, if, in case you don't know what lapping valves is, you know what, let me show you guys real quick. Um, might as well. I forgot to grab this out. If I can remember which drawer it's in. Okay, but this this stuff right here, so a you know, valve lapper. Okay, it's like a suction cup. And then uh, some valve uh, grinding compound. So this is like a multi-compound. Sometimes they have a coarse and a fine, just like sandpaper. So get both if you, if you find that. And then go with the coarse and then go with the fine. Now don't do too much. Um, I can show you guys on this old cylinder head here. And these are, these are some stock valves. Um, you can kind of see this. Let's see if I can focus in. But you can see that's a little thin, but that gray line there, you don't want that taking up that whole area. All right, you need some uh, of it to be shiny, not dull. All right, just slightly wider than that would be good. Um, and then looking at the, the seat itself, you want a similar thing. You don't want it all the way out to one edge or the other. You kind of want it in the middle and, uh, and a nice gray line all the way around. So what you do is you take your suction cup. Might as well. I wasn't intending on showing valve lapping, but might as well. So since we're here, right? Real quick for the people who don't know about it. I'm just trying to do this one-handed. It's a little difficult. Bear with me. Okay, so we got it suction cupped on there. You're going to want it on there pretty evenly. And then you just apply a little bit of that compound all the way around the valve. Don't put any on the stem because that's going to go down into your valve guide in there. And so you don't want to be, you know, grinding up your valve guide. All right? So you put it in here, and then you need two hands for this. But you, you, you almost go like you're trying to start a campfire. Back and forth, pick it up, rotate, go down. Back and forth, pick it up, rotate, go down. And you keep doing that until you achieve that line that you want, all right? So that's uh, valve lapping, okay? And you gotta make sure, pardon me, you gotta make sure the suction cup stays clean, all right? See that little grid on there? That's gonna cause problems. Uh, the suction cup's gonna keep falling off on you. All right, so we lapped the valves in, we rounded the edges. Um, on the last video, I talked about this a little bit, what I did inside of here. Um, I don't know if you guys could see that one side of the port is higher and one side of the port is lower. Let me try to get this lighting right so you can see it. But you can see we did some pretty crazy stuff in there. So we'll see how it works out. We'll see if it lasts, I mean. We, uh, we made all those dimples in there to help keep some turbulence going and prevent the fuel from dropping out. You can also do the same thing with an epoxy texture, not to build up the port at all, but just enough to, uh, to make sure that it creates a texture that will keep the air rolling and keep some turbulence. So uh, I've stacked up some epoxy behind the valve that you can't really see now that helps to get the air swirling as it enters the combustion chamber. Um, and when you, when you talk about porting, by the way, guys, you're not hogging out these things because you don't want to lose your velocity. Your speed through the port is very important, especially for your fuel signal out at the carburetor. You just want to take care of the transitional points, all right? And a short side radius uh, is an issue too, which is, uh, which is down in here, the, the turn that it has to make, that hooking turn to come out of the valve, okay? So anyway, the idea is to get it rotating as it comes in and create this rotation that then creates motion in the combustion chamber. And then when it gets compressed and ignited and burned, it will continue to rotate and swirl its way out of the exhaust valve. Now I'm doing this poor man status. 
Okay, I don't have a flow bench or any of that good stuff. So um, what I did was I took it over to the sink when I was done with all my little handiwork on it. And I just ran some water through here at different angles. With, and I put the valve in there with no spring, obviously. And I just kind of manipulated the valve in and out of the head and watched how the water flow came out. And I was pretty surprised like at how well it handles the flow with the shape, even though it's kind of rough. It actually did a pretty good job. So anyhow, on to what this video is actually about. Um, you can see these are kind of scratched up because, you know, doing this with uh, with dual springs, it's it's really difficult um, if you don't have the right tool. So I, I have this one right here and it had these legs on it, as you can see in the picture right there. I ground those pins and I took those legs off and then you could take out a circ clip that's right down here and you can take this whole thing apart. And then what I did was I, I made this bracket out of some scrap aluminum that I had laying around. This is this is stuff you could get at like uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. Um, it's flat and let me tell you how wide it is just so you know because it was pretty strong. It worked out good. So it's about three inches wide. All right, and so I hate when people show you a tool and they don't give you any measurements of it. So it's about, mm, let's say four and, a, four and a half tall, maybe a little taller than that. This side's slanted and I'll show you why. This side's about the same, like four and a half to four and three quarters tall. Um, and then I want to say that I went four and a half or four and a quarter across. All right, yeah, about four and a quarter across. So. The idea was that these two are positioned on this side. And so one screw goes into the top hole on the exhaust port and the other one I believe is not used or, or for a shroud or something. And so those two right there being drilled at the right spot helped me to be at an angle that's, that works with the angle of the valve springs. And I'll show you from the front. So you don't have to do everything that I did, but I just wanted to make sure this thing went together without a problem. So this is basically how I made my own valve spring compressor right there. And then this side, just one screw hole going right into where the carburetor, uh, the intake manifold would mount up. And then I just welded two washers, one on either side. And some of you are going, oh, I don't have a welder. Well, you don't have to do that. I just did it for extra stability. You might not even need it. I had to bend these a little bit to get them to sit on there just right. But man, when I when I bolt this thing up um, with the 65 pound springs, those 15 pound helpers, the dual springs, all right, because I'm just using the, the 50 pounds now instead. Um, what I did was I put a piece of threaded rod, 10 millimeter, right down through the middle right there to help hold the middle of this thing down so it wouldn't flex on me. But this stuff's actually pretty stout. So you may not even need that middle one. And then I just drilled those two holes in it and it worked flawlessly to get those uh, those split keepers in. Um, I would advise if you're really, you know, turning some high RPM to make sure you got some stiffer valve springs. These are the aluminum um, keepers with the, um, these are the aluminum retainers, I'm sorry, with split keepers, like an automotive style um, setup. And then also I got the lash caps, okay? Take note of which one came from where because one may be a little bit taller than the other. As you can see, the stem height's a little different. So pay attention to that, right? Obviously put the more shallow one where the, the keepers are closer to the top, right? Um, so you can see what happens when you don't have a spring compressor and you try to do it with all kinds of stuff. I mean, it, it was a, a pain. Um, and then this is the billet, uh, guide plate for the chromoly push rods right there okay um so talking about what i really wanted to talk about in this video um is assembling the head don't forget that underneath the exhaust spring is a shim it's like a rotator it helps make the exhaust valve able to rotate in operation which helps distribute the heat because um, remember, this one's opening into fire. This one is bringing in fresh, cooler air, right? So that shim needs to be on there before the seal. So then you put the seal, your spring, and then you put your, your retainer on top. You compress that down. And then I use this stuff on the valve to because it's kind of tacky. 
and it'll actually help you uh, stick those keepers to it. And then you just loosen up and let the spring push that retainer up over the cone shape of those keepers. You may have to guide it a little bit, but it goes right on and it's perfect. Um, I like to put a small extension on here and then use like a, like a dead blow hammer, something like this, and just lightly tap it just to make sure that the, the keepers are seated. And the first time I run the engine, I might, I might run it a little bit with the valve cover off just to look at everything, make sure everything looks good. I might make a little mess with some oil, but I'd rather that than destroy the engine, right? So we make sure everything is good and then, and then we will uh, put the valve cover on. Okay, so what I did here was I clayed the engine, okay? So I put two just round pieces of clay, kind of guesstimating where the valves would be, pretty good guesstimate, right? I just held the head up on the side like this and looked at it and I placed this clay and then what I did was I used the old head gasket, uh, which I showed you guys in part one, and I measured it at 50 thousandths, okay? Upside down, there you go, All right? And that's its compressed thickness. So I used this one and the head and keep everything organized, okay? See that? Keep everything organized so it goes back together the same way. So if you're you're really close, you don't mess it up by swapping stuff around. All right, so, so here's what we did. We put the clay on there, we put the old head gasket on, we put the cylinder head on, and we torqued it down to about 15 foot-pounds. You don't have to even torque it down all the way, but do so evenly. Make sure your dowel holes are clean and the dowels are clean, surface is clean, all that good stuff. And you could see the impression that the valve made from rolling it over. Another good thing to do is put a little lubrication on the valve so that the clay doesn't stick to the valve. Um, and I could tell you that this is this is the area on the on the piston that gets really close to the cylinder head where it's welded. And there's about 60 thousandths there. So what does that tell me? My piston is about 10 thousandths in the hole, all right? And my gasket is 50 thousandths. There's my 60 thousandths of squish area uh, that you see there. And then I have uh, about 90 thousandths right there. And I have about 130 thousandths on this side. Why so much on the intake side? Well, because the piston is moving away from the intake valve when the intake valve is opening versus this, where the piston is moving towards the exhaust valve as the exhaust valve is opening. So you'll always have a closer um, deal going on with your, um, you'll have less clearance with your exhaust valve, all right? So that's cleaning it just to make sure that everything is right and comfortable. And with the aluminum rod, they say that you should allot at least um, 80 thousandths of clearance. Some people say that's a lot. Some people say they've run them down as low as like 20 thousandths of clearance between that, that piston and the valve. Um, obviously, don't go smashing your clay if you haven't measured it. I sliced it with a razor blade and took off this half and took off this half and I was able to measure it like that. Um, and the reason I do that too is because then I have a second chance and I'm getting a nice cross section of it. So I just use a little digital caliper that I have, a little blue point digital caliper. Um, let me show that to you guys real quick. This right here. It's not the most precise, okay? But it does, it does measure, you see? The thousandths of an inch. So we'll get pretty close, not perfect. All right, you can do it with a micrometer, but that's tough with clay. All right, those fine jaws right there make it kind of easier to measure on that clay. Okay, and we can see that there's enough. So it's kind of a go, no go gauge, right? Just so you guys know. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and finish putting it all together. But I just wanted to share a couple of those tips with you. Um, oh, another one is I Loctite these with a little blue Loctite. Clean the holes, clean the studs real good, the threads. And, uh, and a little blue Loctite, and don't you don't have to kill these, you know, but snug them down good. Um, unless you got roller rockers or something like that, they come with a shaft and, and uh, roller bearings, and so they're a lot nicer than these are, but this is better than nothing. These are billet and they're roller tip, so it's better than stock, and they're 1.2 ratio, so, and this is from NR Racing. All right, so I think that's what I wanted to share in this video, just so you guys can have some more tips, uh, a little bit more than what I gave in video number one. 
Um, oh, also for the porting, this, this, this set right here was really good for just, you know, taking care of those transitional spots. And it's a carbide burst set and it's a long reach. So you can really get in there with it. Okay. Um, another thing that you can do is this thing's kind of burnt up, but it's a, it's a Harbor Freight, um, grinder. Okay. There's the item number and it has this little attachment at the side and it's got the collet. It's a flexible shaft and it's got the, the collet on the end that you could put small tools to do your little porting job and stuff like that. Um, I might as well show it to you guys now since I, <laughs> I have two toolboxes in here, so I kind of have things divided up. This one's more like a home toolbox or the other one's more like a work toolbox. So this is what it looks like. There's the end with the collet. And then uh, and then this part goes on to the grinder right here. It's almost like an old Speedo cable, so it's flexible, all right? Good tool to have, by the way. So if you guys, you know, have a use for something like that, there you go. All right, guys, <laughs> no BMWs in here today, but you know, like I usually say, be safe, don't drink and drive, rock a mask, and see you next time.